comes up with some good costume ideas. You know, I like a fancy dress, so. Coming up on The Wrap this week. Hey! We look back at all the rugby championship action and some big names from the Southern Hemisphere drop in to give us their predictions. I answer all the burning questions and ask Hugo, you spot on, isn't he? And Matt Gitto tells us about his last dance in the USA. Good as any six month period that I had in rugby. Good morning, or should I say buenos dias, or good day, mate. Terrible, yes, I know, but it's me just tipping my metaphorical hat to everything Southern Hemisphere, the rugby championship on fire again at the weekend. The All Blacks proving to be too good once again for Australia's. They retain the Bledisloe Cup and some brand new faces taking centre stage for South Africa as they overturned Argentina at the weekend. So much to talk about, so many talking points, which means we need another edition of Ask Hugo. First question is coming. What are your highlights on the rugby championship games this weekend? Well, there's only one place to start, really. Aaron Smith 101. Him, Dumian, and setting up not just one, but two tries for Cody Taylor. That man at his ripe old age, he's absolutely still got it. Which of the new laws being trialled in this series do you think will have the most impact on the game of rugby? So we've got the 50-22, if you're not sure what it is, have a look out there. So if you're in your own half and you kick the ball with a bounce into the opposition 22, you get the line up there. I love that one, absolutely love that one. I'm hoping as a back three member, it means that you've got to have more people in the backfield. If you've got more people in the backfield, simple maths, you have less people in the front line. So there should be more space to play. What did I think of Finn Russell's comment about the Lions tactics? He's spot on, isn't he? <laughs> he said what I think every fan was feeling at home. And he showed that potentially, had we played a little bit more expansive, that we could have gone after South Africa. When you have one of the best players in the world speaking like that, it should be listened to. Who is the best dancer I ever played with? This is an easy question for me to answer. Danny Cipriani. Unbelievable. He texted us the other day. And I asked him, I mean, we were talking about who might be my pro dancer. I'd be happy if he was my pro dancer. He's electric, absolutely electric. What's your prediction for who's going to win the rugby championship? Um, smart money's got to be New Zealand, hasn't it? You know, nothing on South Africa. They've been amazing, just won the line series, but are they going to be able to go back to back, huge competitions and keep that level of intensity? But New Zealand, they look to play some brilliant rugby, a real freshness about what they're doing. So I'm going to say New Zealand. But that's just my prediction. So let's park that and put that to one side. And let's hear from some greats of the game because they've got a combined, was it 300 test match appearances between them? At least one of them are featured in every single Rugby World Cup. What a stat. You're welcome. Let's hear from them and get their predictions now. Well, it's going to be tight, but I think South Africa needs to prove uh, they are the world champions. They showed it against the Lions and, of course, they showed it against Argentina last week. They are playing a, a very, very good rugby at the moment in every area. So, so I think South Africa will win the rugby championship. How are you going, Hugo? Thanks so much for the call. I was really worried about South Africa coming back in their first game against, against Argentina. But the physicality, the, the, the strong nature of that squad and some new members coming into the squad was outstanding. I'm still worried, unfortunately, all of our games now, from now on, are going to be um, away from home. The All Blacks, probably the strong favourites. They've got two good wins against Australia in that Bledisloe. I would say they slightly edge us because of um, the, the home game advantage, but I'm sure uh, South Africa will give them a really good go. Well, I'm Australian and I think I've, my eyes, I look through my heart a little bit, so I think they're, they're the number one team. So I always uh, have high hopes for, for the Wallabies. I love watching them play. I thought they showed a lot of determination and a lot of poise and, and calmness to come back in, in those tests against France when they could have easily given up. So. I think it's, it's good. They're letting a lot of young talent uh, develop nicely. I think Dave Rennie's doing a great job. Uh, my prediction, as I say, I, I look through my heart a little bit, so I'm going for Australia. I think they're going to they're gonna take it out. I thought the All Blacks were quite rusty um, against Australia in the first test at Eden Park. Um, and it wasn't a great game. And then seven days later, 
Um, I thought both teams, funnily enough, were very good. The All Blacks were outstanding um, right through. Um, Akira Ioane at six. I, I just thought he played played really, really well. Rico Ioane moved into 13 uh, from the wing. Uh, once again, he's getting better and better with every game in that position. So they're developing those. David Harvey inside him looks as though he's the player that they're looking at to take them forward. Uh, so All Blacks very strong. Uh, I think the real test uh, for the All Blacks and South Africa will be when they play each other to see where they're really at. Con contrasting styles in terms of the way they play, um, but I think they will find it very difficult to shut the All Blacks down the way that they shut the Lions down. At the moment, um, once again, uh, you'd say the All Blacks uh, are the odds-on favourite to, to win the championship. So there you have it, a host of predictions. Let us know what you think about that. Well, we couldn't get Matt Gitter on the show without asking him about his stint in the USA, playing in the MLR, and of course, he's doing what he does best, just picking up another trophy, another medal. And we also speak to Matt about who he's most looking forward to watching in this year's Rugby Championship. So you've ended on a massive high in LA, winning yet another trophy in the US. Are you officially retired now? No, not officially, um, but uh, you know, I treated that last game as if it was uh, my last the championship game here. So if it is to be my last, it was a really nice finish. This season for me is as good as any six, six month period that I had in rugby. I think you know, the amount of fun we had off the field, but then on the field, um, getting to know a lot of guys, trying to develop a, a sport in a country where it's not overly popular and, and starting in a team from scratch. It's been just been a really nice journey and, and to do it with my family and to get the win at the end of the season just made everything quite perfect. So we've all seen that video of you embracing Adam Ashley Cooper at the end of that final. How great has it been to share an adventure with one of your closest mates? Really, really special. I think um, he's made the time here just as enjoyable as having my family here. You know, once we, we go to training, he's always up for a laugh. He, uh, comes up with some good costume ideas for us to, to dress up in. You know, I like a fancy dress, so yeah, he's been he's been a big part of it. And to be a part of his last game, and uh, uh, yeah, it was just something, because I, I got subbed off, I wanted to actually just tell him congrats and, and do that on the field, you know, rather than waiting until we got together once everything was over. Okay, Roy, let's look ahead to the Rugby Championship and how exciting is it to have South Africa back in the mix after missing last year? Yeah, I think the Rugby Championship has that extra bit of spice this, this season, having South Africa back. Um, <clears throat> obviously, world champions have just come off the back of the British and Irish Lions series winning that. So they're probably the number one team in the world at the moment. So it's a really good gauge for the Australians to see where they're at. Obviously, it'd be a great matchup with New Zealand and, and having Argentina there. So it's perfect timing for me. I'm about to go into a two week hotel quarantine. So. I'll get plenty of info and I'll be able to follow it quite closely now. You said you're about to head home and into quarantine, so can you give us one player from each of the four nations that you're looking forward to watching from the comfort of your sofa? Probably Noah, uh, the, the number 10. He um, has obviously been playing for the Brumbies. I remember actually training with him. Uh, I went and did a training session for the Brumbies Academy. And out of all the kids there practicing and training, as soon as I finished, I went to Peter Hewitt, who's the, who was the Brumbies' back coach at the time. So I really liked that Noah. He, he was just that step above. He, he's got a lot, just the right level of confidence. He's got really good skill. Um, his work ethic that training day was, was amazing. You could just see that he was going to be a different kind of player. Probably Dwayne Van Muren. He's, he's coming off the back of, um, Obviously, the surgery, he, he missed out. He was in the training squad, I think, during the British and Irish Lions, but he didn't get the opportunity to play. So he'll be itching to, to have a crack. He's always won. I think what makes Dwayne special is he, whether it's the first minute or the 80th minute, he's so strong. So unless you put your body on the line, unfortunately, I had to play him in Japan. And off the back of a scrum, he picked the ball up and ran my channel, but he tripped over a little bit and I just held on onto his boot lace. But afterwards, my shoulder was stinging. Um, he didn't even feel a thing. I was talking to him after the game. Like he's just, he's a different, different kind. Those farmers, the Afrikaners, he, he's just a tough man. From Argentina, maybe uh, Facunda, Facunda Isa. I, I played with him from uh, Toulon. 
I just never really got my head around how to pronounce his name right, but he, he's a beast. He's a great man and, and he gives every game uh, 100%. So. He's similar to Dwayne. It, obviously, Argentinian, so he wears his heart on the sleeve a little bit. Uh, he's very passionate. Uh, he's quick, very quick for a big man, uh, and he's strong over the ball. I think at Toulon, they've, uh, they've loved having him there. From New Zealand, I really like watching Richie Moanga play. I think he, he plays with a lot of freedom. He, he's, uh, he attacks the line. He's always in the game. Um, to be starting um, for the All Blacks ahead of someone, say, Bowden Barrett. I know he's coming back from Japan. I'm not sure what they're doing with the rotational basis there, but to, to be starting ahead of someone like that shows how well he's playing. He is constantly attacking, looking for opportunities. Yeah, I enjoy watching how he plays a little bit more eyes up, sees what's playing, what's going on in front of him, rather than being a bit prescriptive. So there we go. There's the legend. That is Matt Gitto. And there we are. Another episode of the wrap done. And we'll be back next Wednesday. So make sure that you follow World Rugby across all of its social media channels and hit the subscribe button on YouTube because we're nearing one million subscribers. That's all you guys enjoying all of this. Thank you. Take care. All the very best of luck. See you next week.